Welcome back. So, in the first part of this lecture, we saw how to write the stress tensor down. We saw that the stress tensor is symmetric, and when we use the stress tensor, typically in force and momentum balances, we need to link the state of stress in a fluid to the deformation of the fluid. For a Newtonian fluid, we see that the state of stress is immediately linked and instantaneously linked to the rate of deformation. For other fluids that are slightly more complex, that we'll examine in Module B of this course, we'll see that that's not always the case. However, if we're going to be using measures of fluid deformation that we can sum in some way or other to give stress, then we need to pay particular attention to how we do that. So, if we think about measures of fluid deformation, one such measure is the rate of strain. This will be written as a tensor. You might have come across it in 1D as just a velocity gradient, but in 3D it takes a lot more information to describe the fluid deformation, and so it's tensorial in format. We'll also see in part B of this course that we can dis use strain as a measure of deformation in polymers. We're not going to touch on that just yet. We'll leave that as a treat for later. Now, if you dive into the rheological literature, you'll come across another measure of fluid deformation called a deformation tensor. It's given the symbol capital D, and it looks very, very similar to the way in which we write a rate of strain tensor down. However, it's different by a factor of two, so please do be careful which you use in a calculation, whether it's rate of strain or deformation, and that you have the right factor of two in the right place Otherwise, it can lead to some rather embarrassing errors. So, what we'll do now is do a little bit of revision. We'll remind ourselves of how we measure fluid deformation in 1D, and then we'll explore how we can describe it in 3D. So, on the blackboard, I've written down the Newtonian constitutive equation in one dimension. Tau, shear stress, is equal to mu fluid viscosity times du by dy, a velocity gradient. Now we've seen that stress, tau, is actually a tensor quantity and that each element therefore has to be correctly identified in terms of face and direction. So let's be a little bit more precise and let's write this down as we should knowing that the element tau comes from a tensor. What we actually have in this definition is tau yx. So that is equal to mu times du by dy. So tau yx, so face first, that's the y face and the x direction is at stress. So the x direction stress acting on the y face, tau yx, is equal to mu fluid viscosity times a change in x direction velocity u in the y direction. Fine. Now that velocity gradient, du by dy, we're going to call gamma dot yx. Gamma dot is one element of my rate of strain tensor and we can identify which element by its subscripts. So gamma dot yx means that I've got a gradient in the y direction of the x direction velocity, as we can see in that little diagram. The arrows are the uh, direction of the velocity, and we can see they increase with increasing y. So that's du by dy, which is gamma dot yx. So for any element of my rate of strain tensor, if we have gamma dot ij, i is the direction of the velocity gradient. j is the direction of the velocity. So gamma dot yx, just to recap, y is the direction in which the velocity is changing, x is the x direction velocity that's actually doing the changing. So let's look back in 1D. There we have gamma dot yx is du by dy, and that is effectively information about velocity gradients, and we can relate that to the state of stress tau, tau equals mu du dy. So that's 1D. What about in 3D? Let's propose something. Let's propose that gamma dot tensor, and we can see it's tensor because it's bold and it's non-italic, is equal to velocity gradient information, grad v. Now grad can strike fear into the hearts of some, but don't be afraid of it. All it is is just a differential, but it's a differential in 3D. So grad in Cartesian coordinates is du dx, or d by dx, d by dy, and d by dz. 
grad of a scalar, scalar P for pressure, dpdx, dpdy, dpdz, the result would be a vector. Grad of V, where V is already a vector and has three pieces of information associated with it, will therefore be a tensor. So let's write out that tensor and see what it looks like. If we look across a row, we have du by dx, dv by dx, dw by dx. If we look down a column, for example, the first column is du by dx, du by dy, and du by dz. So we have succeeded in capturing all the information about velocity gradients within this flow. However, there's a problem, isn't there? Because this tensor is asymmetric. And if we're using gamma dot, my rate of strain tensor, to sum to a stress, we have to have a symmetric tensor. So our proposal of gamma dot equals grad v is wrong. Back to the drawing board. Let's propose something different. Let's say that what we actually have is gamma dot tensor equals grad v plus its transpose. Now remember that a transpose of a matrix or a tensor is where you swap the rows and columns around. So let's see what this looks like if we expand it out in longhand. On the left hand side, gamma dot, my rate of strain tensor, is equal to two parts now, grad v, expanded out in full as that first tensor, grad v transpose, we can see it's that first tensor with the rows and the columns swapped about. And if you look at each element position within that tensor, we can see that the result of summing those two together is symmetric. So gamma dot equals grad v plus grad v transpose. It's equal to the sum of those two terms because it maintains symmetry. Let's write it out in full. There we go. On the principal diagonal, 2 du dx, 2 dv dy, 2 dw dz. On the upper and lower triangular sections, we have dv dx plus du dy, du dy plus dv dx. So we can see that we have indeed tensorial symmetry. Now, it's always a good idea to get a mental model of what these tensors actually mean. When we looked at the stress tensor, we saw that there was significance to non-zero components on the principal diagonal. They were normal stresses. And significance to non-zero stresses on the off diagonals in the upper and lower triangular sections. Those were shear stresses. In a similar way, if we look at the deformation tensor, we can get a mental picture as to what deformations are going on by examining which components of the tensor are non-zero. So, if we look at the upper and lower triangular sections away from the principal diagonal, as you might expect, they are shear deformations because the um, same terms in the stress tensor are shear stresses. So shear deformations are on the upper and lower triangular parts. The principal diagonal, therefore, is what's termed extensional deformation. It gives rise to a normal stress, but if we think about what du by dx is saying, we've got an x-direction velocity changing in the x-direction, so the flow is accelerating, or decelerating, in the x-direction. Fine, same for dv dy, same for w dz, so it's pulling out something or squashing something. OK, great. Let's recap some key points. We're using a measure of deformation called strain rate, and it's in effect a tensor of velocity gradient information. If we want to access a particular element of that tensor, we need to do so by using the correct subscripts, and it's important that we get those right. We see that strain rate is all about velocity gradient information, but because we've got this symmetry, it's actually two bits of velocity gradient information added together. So gamma dot is grad v plus grad v transpose.